All right, let's talk in detail about the Chiefs' 53-man roster as it stands today in the 22 cuts that took place, including some that surprised not only me, but many others as well. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, a.k.a. the red-bearded, truth-telling, pansy-slapping master of all things Chiefs Kingdom, or sometimes known as Sir Redbeard of Chiefs Vengeance, and I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so make sure to sub if you're new, hit that like button if you wish, Josh Gordon, and... 21 other players well in their next chapter, even though some will make it back to the practice squad. Because yes, the roster was cut down to 53 players today, and we gotta talk about it. As far as roster cuts go, 22 players were cut today as I stated earlier. Some were waived, some were released, and one was waived with an injury designation. Now, here's the difference between waived and released in case you were wondering. When a player is cut, they are either waived or released. A player with four accrued seasons is released, meaning their contract is terminated and they are a free agent that can sign anywhere immediately. A player with less than four accrued seasons is waived, meaning their contract stays intact until they go through the waiver wire process and a waived player can be claimed by any other team looking for players. There is a time period in which any team that wants a waived player submits a claim. At the end of the claim period, the team with the highest waiver priority gets the player and his contract. If a player is not claimed in that window, their contract is terminated and they are free to sign anywhere, including to a team's practice squad. And in case you were wondering, waiver wire priority is determined by last year's standing. So the Chiefs are 30th out of 32 teams in that process. Clear as mud? I freaking hope so. Okay, so now you know what happens when a player is waived, and then what happens when a player is released. So here's where the Chiefs stood as of today. They had 22 players to get rid of, and of those players, here's who they waived. Safety, Zane Anderson, cornerback DiCaprio Boodle, offensive guard Mike Caliendo, linebacker Jack Cochran, running back Jerry and Ely, tight end Jordan Franks, offensive tackle Vitali German, safety Nazi Johnson, defensive end Azur Kamara, safety Devon Key, defensive end Kahinde Ogini Hassan, and wide receiver Cornell Powell. And for the vested veterans, they released linebacker Jermaine Carter, wide receiver Corey Coleman, wide receiver Darice Fountain, Wide receiver Josh Gordon, linebacker Elijah Lee, center Austin Ryder, defensive tackles Danny Shelton and Taylor Stallworth. And then here's the one player they waived with an injury designation, tight end Matt Bushman. So if you take all those players and remove them from the equation, here's what you have on the offensive side of the ball as of today. Three quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, Chad Henney, and Shane Buchel. Five running backs, CEH, Jarek McKinnon, Isaiah Pacheco, Ronald Jones, and fullback Michael Burton. Four tight ends, Travis Kelsey, Blake Bell, Noah Gray, and Jody Fortson. Five wide receivers, McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Sky Moore, and Justin Watson. Nine offensive linemen, left tackle Orlando Brown Jr., left guard Joe Tooney, center Creed Humphrey, right guard Trey Smith, right tackle Andrew Wiley, which is your starting five. And then you also have offensive tackles, Jerron Christian and Prince Tego Winago, offensive guard, Nick Allegretti, and offensive lineman, Darian Kennard. All right, let's chat about the offense for a moment because there was a lot there. Three quarterbacks, this was expected by some, and a, I could see that happening by others. I was in the, yeah, I could see that happening camp, but initially had two QBs on my list, Mahomes and Henny. But again, the Chiefs are so far down on the waiver wire priority, 30th out of 32 teams. That would mean if Shane Buchel was waived by the Chiefs, 29 other teams would have to pass on him in order for the Chiefs to be able to re-sign him to the practice squad. So the Chiefs obviously thought Shane outplayed himself this preseason and he would not be safe unless they kept him on the 53-man roster. This also tells me that Chad Henney could possibly be playing his last year in Kansas City and Shane is the next man up in 2023. I have a feeling the Chiefs keep Henny around for this season and let him be that dependable veteran presence in case Mahomes gets injured. But after that, I think it's Shane Buchel. I could be wrong, but that's where my gut is telling me right now. For running backs, this played out how I thought it would with the Chiefs keeping four and a fullback. So the reason I predicted them to keep CEH, McKinnon, Pacheco, and Ronald Jones is because of Derek Gore's Injury. Gore fractured his thumb in the preseason game against the Packers, was placed on IR, and then reached an injury settlement with the team and was released. So he's now a free agent and could potentially re-sign to the Chiefs practice squad later down the road once he's healed. But I think Gore's injury forced the Chiefs' hand a bit to keep Rojo around for some much-needed depth. Had Gore been healthy, he was a player who would have more than likely been safe and ended up back on the Chiefs practice squad. And I think Rojo would have went bye-bye. But 
With Gore injured, Rojo had to stay. He'd never make it to the practice squad. And you also need to consider both Clyde's and McKinnon's injury history, i.e. the Chiefs really need the freaking depth. Well, with the Chiefs keeping three QBs and five running backs, that's those four and then fullback Mike Burton, they had to cave somewhere, and that is at the wide receiver position. I initially predicted the Chiefs to keep six receivers, Juju, McColl, MVS, Sky, Justin Watson, and then Darius Fountain as wide receiver six, but they opted instead to keep five and let Fountain and everyone else, Corey Coleman, Cornell, Powell, Josh Gordon, etc., go away. It's a tough one for Josh Gordon, but I certainly do wish him the best. It's not entirely out of the realm of possibilities for Gordon to end up on the Chiefs practice squad, but... We shall see. I think before Gordon, we'd see Fountain or possibly even Cornell Powell as well if he clears waivers. For tight ends, this is an interesting situation. They kept four, Kelsey Fortson, Gray, and Blake Bell, but they are indeed moving Blake Bell to IR and then bringing back linebacker Elijah Lee, who they released today. So you will then only have three tight ends for the time being. I predicted this scenario with Bell moving to IR after he made the initial 53. I just wasn't sure who they would bring back once he was moved. Well, question answered as it's linebacker Elijah Lee. He actually tweeted out and said, keep your jerseys, I'll be back. So it's him. As far as offensive linemen go, you have Brown Jr., Tooney, Humphrey, Smith, Wiley, Allegretti, Christian, Kennard, and Prince Tega Winogho. And the only one I was off about was Darian Kennard. I initially had Austin Ryder making the roster over Kennard as I just thought... Kennard had played pretty poorly, but certainly wasn't out of the realm of possibilities for the Chiefs to hold on to Kennard if they saw enough potential from him, especially if they didn't think he'd clear waivers and be able to get re-signed to the practice squad. Well, it seems like they did not think he'd make it to the practice squad safely, so alas, they held on to him and instead released Austin Ryder. Ryder could very well himself end up being the one on the practice squad instead, but we shall see. The benefit of holding on to Kennard is that you have a cheap player for four years still, so why not see if he could develop into a tackle or at the very least a serviceable guard? And I found it interesting and worth noting that the Chiefs listed Kennard as an offensive lineman rather than an offensive tackle. So I'm not sure if that means anything, but I guess we shall see what they were thinking with Kennard sometime down the road. All right, as far as the defense goes, the Chiefs went with four defensive tackles. Chris Jones, Derek Nottie, Tershawn Wharton, and Colin Saunders. Six defensive ends, Frank Clark, George Karloftis, Carlos Dunlap, Mike Dana, Joshua Kando, and Malik Herring. Four linebackers, Willie Gay, Nick Bolton, Darius Harris, and Leo Chanel. But remember, Elijah Lee will be added to the roster after tight end Blake Bell has moved to IR, so it's really five linebackers, and the Chiefs went with six cornerbacks, Legereus Sneed, Trent McDuffie, Rashad Fenton, Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson, and Chris Lamons. Four safeties, Justin Reed, Juan Thornhill, Brian Cook, and Deion Bush, and three specialists. Kicker, Harrison Budker, punter, Tommy Townsend, and long snapper, James Winchester. So, let's break all this down. There were four defensive tackles, Chris Jones, Derek Nottie, Tershawn Wharton, and Colin Saunders, and then you had... Six defensive ends, who I already said, but here they are. Frank Clark, George Karloftis, Carlos Dunlap, Mike Dana, Joshua Kando, and Malik Herring. I initially predicted five defensive tackles and five defensive ends with DT, big little man Danny Shelton making the roster, and then Malik Herring making it over Joshua Kando for the fifth defensive end spot. But the Chiefs opted to take one less tackle, releasing both Danny Shelton and Taylor Stallworth, instead going with one extra defensive end, adding both Joshua Kando and Malik Herring to the bottom of the defensive end depth chart. There's a couple reasons why I think they did this. I think they're a bit worried about the defensive end depth right now as it stands with Carlos Dunlap battling his Achilles inflammation and with Frank Clark continuing to miss practice with sickness. A sickness I believe to be a lingering stomach issue of sorts, whether it's a parasite or something chronic. I don't know, but it's been around for a while now and it continues to bother him. It'll be interesting to see if Danny Shelton or Taylor Stallworth, speaking of defensive tackles again, end up on the practice squad later, but I'm not sure if any of them will actually end up making it there. All right, for cornerbacks, again, you have six. Sneed, McDuffie, Fenton, Williams, Jalen Watson, and Chris Lammons. This is what I had initially predicted, and it all makes sense to me. Chris Lammons is a valuable special teams ace, and Dave Tobe wanted him, so boom, Dave Tobe 
gets him. Rookies Joshua Williams and Jalen Watson have both played pretty great in preseason and will be the next men up if anyone gets injured outside of the starting three. It's also interesting to note that three of the six corners are rookies. Pretty wild if you ask me. For safeties, no surprises with four total. Reed, Thornhill, Cook, and Deion Bush. This all makes sense to me and is what I predicted as well. As for the specialists, Butker, Townsend, and Winchester, just don't forget Justin Reed can be a backup kicker in a pinch if Butker got hurt in a game. So that's just a little bonus. And as of right now, that's a total of 26 on offense, 24 on defense, and three specialists. But remember, once Blake Bell goes to IR, linebacker Elijah Lee returns, making it an even 25 on offense and 25 on defense. And I also want to point out that nine out of the 10 rookies from this year's draft made the 53-man roster, with the lone rookie not making it being Nazi Johnson, who could very well still find himself on the Chiefs practice squad. And that is pretty freaking incredible if you ask me. Now, here's a couple cuts that were surprising to me in my beard overall. It was mainly two guys, Danny Shelton and Darius Fountain. I was fairly sure that Shelton or Stallworth at the very least would be making the roster at the defensive tackle position, but instead the Chiefs opted to release both of those veterans. So maybe one of them ends up on the practice squad. Not sure. Hopefully we'll find out soon. And then Fountain was the next guy who I was surprised about. I projected him to be wide receiver six, yet it makes sense why they instead chose to keep five total. Think about this for a moment. You have those five receivers, McColl, Sky, Juju, MVS, and Justin Watson to catch passes, but also Pacheco, McKinnon, and CEH can catch some passes as well as tight ends Jody Fordson, Travis Kelsey, and Noah Gray if needed. With all those receiving weapons, it makes sense to me why the Chiefs opted for five wide receivers to preserve Shane Buchel at QB3, and also to have some additional running back depth in Ronald Jones the second. All right, y'all still with me? If so, blink twice. <laughs> what did you guys think of today's cutdowns? Are you happy, sad, glad, furious as George Karloftis? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and let's throw haymakers about it down there per usual. Make sure to leave a bearded comment or super thanks to be featured in an upcoming vid. Like this vid for the algorithm push, do it. And then check out this video here, pew pew, which is a trailer to the Chiefs franchise episode three coming out soon. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.